Welcome to today's Bite Size PD on Microbit Basics. I'm Chandra Martz and I am a Digital Teaching and Learning Specialist at Canyon School District. Don't forget um, to look at these professional learning norms and pick one that you are going to focus on throughout today's PD. Our learning intention and success criteria are, I am learning about microbits and make code so that I can get a basic understanding of how to use the products with my students. Your success criteria is that you'll know you'll, you've learned it when you can understand the basic functions and features of a microbit and use block code inputs to program the microbit to produce simple outputs. If that success criteria is a little confusing to you right now, hopefully you will understand it by the end of this PD because we will be going through that vocabulary throughout this PD. Looking at the MTSS framework, we are focused on high quality teaching and learning, and we are um, focused within that on the idea of scaffolding. When you're doing um, micro bits or make code, any sort of coding, computer science with the kids, um, it is very important to work on scaffolding because um, everyone's going to be at a different level with it, and this is going to create a great vertical alignment in our third through 12th grades with those micro bits. Our rationale is that we are um, using coding to build computer science vertical alignment in those grades three through 12. Our agenda is that we are going to look at the computer science standards, focusing on what is a micro bit, those function and features of the micro bits, key vocabulary, we're gonna tour micro bit a little bit, and then we're gonna do some coding. So um, when we are looking at using micro bits, it's not just for the fun of it. There are actual computer science standards that go behind it. It's just micro bits are a great way to implement those computer science standards into your classroom. So in our third through um, fifth grades, those elementary standards for decoding problems, we are um, looking at events and loops, and we are comparing and refining multiple algorithms. 6th through 8th grade, those middle school alignments are going to be that they are working with variables, they are making modifications, and that they're testing and analyzing the effects and changes in variables. There are lots of classes that go along with these standards that students can take, but they can also be added right into your um, normal core standard classes. High school also has standards for 9, 10, 11, and 12 that they're designing algorithms and that they are iteratively designing and developing computational artifacts. Also high school classes, but remember these can be used in science, social studies, math, ELA, all kinds of um, different classes. <clears throat> so what are micro bits? Micro bits are this little guy that you see down here. They are about, um, an inch by two inches, so really small. So micro bits are small programmable computers that are designed for educational use. They have LEDs, buttons, and sensors enabling the creation of interactive projects like games and robots. Students can explore computing and electronics in an engaging hands-on way. If you go into the slides, you'll be able to watch this video later. Um, I'm not going to play it for you now because I'm going to get into this with you. Let's go ahead and look at the functions and the features of the micro bit. So this is the micro bit enlarged just a little bit. And if you notice, you've got your um, reset and power button. So this is what um, can reset it. If you don't like what it's doing, you can um, make it go back to the beginning. Your USB connector, this is how you're going to connect it to a computer or Chromebook in order to be able to um, get the information from your computer onto that micro bit. There are um, touch logos right here that the kids can touch and program that to um, do different, feature, different things. They can also program these buttons of A and B. It also has the ability to shake it to get it to respond. Um, there are pins right here at the bottom that they can um, put things into. So maybe they want to focus on hydroponics or different things like that. Those can be connected down here. 
Um, there are things like a radio antenna, so if they want to program a robot, they can use that. And um, they could even use one micro bit in a um, controller, and they could use one micro bit in the robot, and they can pr um, program those two micro bits so the controller is controlling that robot. Lots of different features that can happen. There is a microphone that can um, take in input information. There is also um, battery that you can connect to it. There's speakers if you want it to make sound. Um, it even has compass, etc. So it has a lot of features that can be used. One of the biggest features that it has that most kids use is this LED light. And I'm going to show you guys a few examples of that in just a little bit because that is one of the most basic features that you could use. So when you are looking at um, creating um, stuff with micro bit, the first thing and the easiest is the simplicity of it and that it can be used with block based coding. And I will show you that in Microsoft Make Code in just a little while. But basically, you are taking these blocks and you are connecting them together to string information, and that is going to be your input. You're saying, here's what I want my program to, or what I want my um, computer to do, and then um, based off of your output, um, it will do it. They are versatile, so they can be programmed in JavaScript, Python, or Block. So while Block is the easiest that you can just drag and drop over, you can use Python or um, Java, and those can be a great way to show your students um, that are Block coding some of those um, features of that Java code or that Python, some of that wording and language hands-on so they can be used in many ways um, to quickly show that immediate input and output feedback. <clears throat> the micro bits can build critical thinking and problem-solving skills via coding um, which is really important because it helps create that um, students to start analyzing and um, growing in a different type of sense like computer science. So some of our key vocabulary for the micro bit is input, and that is a way to give information to a computer. So an example of that would be like putting block code in instructions into the make code. The definition or output is the next one. So the last one was input. This one is output. This is how to get the information out of the computer. So you may be putting in the computer that it's going to make a noise. The output is that the noise is happening, that it was programmed. Okay, an algorithm is those step-by-step -step procedures. So building the simple program to choose a number one through 10. And we can um, show you that in just a little while. An event is what forces that to happen. So the action that causes something to happen. So that could be a click, that could be a shake, um, whatever that, that action is. A bug is going to happen a lot when they are first learning how to program. And in fact, it's gonna happen a lot after they get really good at it because they're gonna get more complex. But a bug is an error in the program that prevents the program from running as expected. So if they're trying to um, have the um, micro bit randomize a number and they shake it and it doesn't randomize or it, randomize, it puts a zero on it every single time, they know that they have a bug. So the next definition is debugging and that's finding a fix to the problem in an algorithm or a program. So instead of just giving up, they're actually trying to figure that out. They're fixing that problem. Iterate okay, is doing something, evaluating how it went, and then improving upon it. And that's really what we want our students to do when they are using the micro bit. So they may, have, they may um, try to build something, they'll test it, it doesn't work. Then they're going to fix some things, test it again, if it works, great, and they can move on. Otherwise, they can keep trying to fix it until it works correctly. Block-based coding are those blocks that you will see once you get onto make code. There's other programs too, but Microbit works 
on make code. So it's that program language that allows those users to create code using blocks rather than text. All right, let's go ahead and take a micro bit tour now and let's start learning how to use some of those features. So again, here is another video that you could watch later on. All right, so inside of make code and I'll take you in there in just a little bit, but I wanted to show you some of the features first. When you go into make code, um, you're going to see two pieces. The first one is the left hand side and that is your virtual micro bit. So you'll be able to build your code, your inputs on the right hand side and then test them on the left side with that virtual micro bit. Um, in the middle, you're going to see the toolbox. It's also going to act as your garbage. So as you um, want to start creating that code that you want to use, you're going to pull those items out of the toolbox. When a, something doesn't work and you have a bug, you may need to delete some stuff so you can drag it straight back into that toolbox and it will act as your garbage. Notice that they are color coded. So we've got some basic functions that you can use and that's gonna be things like your LED and different things like that. Um, inputs is gonna be how things are going to happen. There's also music, there's LED, different things. Um, radio, that it gets a little bit more complex. We talked about um, in those standards, those loops and variables, those can be added too. Those are gonna be more advanced features, but they can start being added as the students get to know more about it. <coughs> And then on the right hand side is your workspace. So you will take these objects and you will drag them over into the workspace if you'd like to use them. All right, so let's um, start digging into how to code that virtual micro bit. First thing you're gonna do, and you may wanna follow along with me and pause as needed, you're gonna go into makecode.microbit.org. When you get into that, it's going to look like this where it's going to have projects that you can create a new project or you can look at other people's projects and kind of go off of those. There's also some tutorials that we'll look at in just a second. When you get in, you're going to need to connect your micro bit. When you connect your micro bit, you'll click on the three dots first and then you'll connect that device, hit that next button, and then you'll need to connect the micro bit and hit that connect button again. It will tell you that it's connected and then you're ready to download code to it. Okay, so the first thing we're going to do is we are going to um, program our LEDs on our micro bit to do our initials. Again, my name is Trondermart, so I'm going to do the initials CM. I'm going to go in makecode.microbit.org. It's going to look like this and then you're going to um, come here and you can create a new project. We'll just start from scratch today. I'm just going to name this test and I am going to hit the create button. Notice it is taking me into my micro bit. On the left, um, here's our features here in the middle, that toolbox, and then over on the right is what we're doing as our input. Okay, that is our workspace. Again, on the top, here is our blocks and our JavaScript. So as we start putting stuff in here, you can actually change it into JavaScript and see what's happening here. At any time, you can change back and forth so you can see those processes happening. So we were going to create our initials on our micro bit. So the first thing we can do is we can use an on start or forever. I a lot of times like to use that forever at the very beginning as I'm starting to learn. And I'm going to click on my basics and this one is going to be my show LED. So I'm going to show an LED. I can click on these LED squares individually or I can also click and drag and that does make the feature a lot faster. So I'm going to use that as my C. I'm going to come up and make an M here. All right, so here's my CM. Now notice over here on my left, because I said that it's going to be used forever, 
it automatically shows up on my screen. Now, I can do a couple other things too. For example, if I want that to show up, but I don't want it to show up until I click something, I could put the input that it's going to be. When I press button A, it is now going to create my initials. And then I could even do a, if I press button A, I don't want it to be button A because I've already used button A. So this time I might say, when I push button B, I want it to change to a nothing. So it clears it for me. So let's go ahead and see what that looks like. On my virtual uh, micro bit, I can press the button A. Notice it comes up with my initial. And then if I press the button B, it should go back to clearing it for me. Great, that worked perfectly. If you haven't tried that, go ahead and pause and try that. All right, the next thing that we want to try is we want to try putting it in our full name. Um, come to our basic and notice here is a show string. So if I go and I show a string, I can pull that in. I do want you to notice that if I pull it in and it is not inside of anything, notice it's going to turn that yellow with that gray. That's showing me that it doesn't matter what I do over here, this is never going to do anything because it's not connected. So I may want to do it forever and that way this isn't going to really do much. Okay, so I could test that over here. Notice it says hello. If I press button A, it's gonna show up for just a second, but then it's gonna go back to that hello. I might want it to say my name instead. So instead, I'm going to change that hello to Chandra. And I can play it over here if I want to. Notice it's just working forever and it's ha scrolling my name across because that is what a string is. Now, if I wanted it to do my full name, I could. I could do a space and do Marts. So now when I come over here, it can play automatically. I like to turn it off so it's not um, too busy for me. But notice it's doing my name. I've got a space there and then it's doing my last name. Sometimes it's hard to see that difference between your first name and your last name. So let's think about options of ways that we could fix that. Some things we could do is we could come down here and we could do a second string. So this has my first name on the first string and I could do my last name on the second string. Other options I could do okay, would be, I want, when I press button A, it's gonna do my first name, or if I press button B, it's gonna do my second name, my last name. So button A, there's my first name going. If I switch it over to button B, when it finishes, now I can, it shows my last name. Maybe I want it to go all in one, but I want it to wait just a second, have that pause between my first name and my second name. I could come here, I can go, let's see. Um, in my basic, I can go down here to pause. Um, when I pause, notice it's coming up with a 100. So that is a microsecond. So that basically in um, computer language is gonna be like a 10th of a second. So that's gonna be like, um, two tenths of a second, a half a second, or I could do one second, two seconds, five seconds. So um, the, at first, let's just do a first name, have it pause, and then let's bring this over to my um, last name. Let's see what that does. So um, do you remember what we need to do? Right, we're gonna press A to get it to start. So here's my first name. It should pause. And then my second name. 
All right, so that wasn't really long enough. We couldn't really tell the difference. So let's go ahead and let's do a one second pause this time. Pressing A shows my first name, pausing, and then my second name comes through. Okay, so they could do that for a lot of different things. Um, maybe they wanted to make a beating heart. It could look much the same. Instead of using a string, I'm just gonna delete those really quick. They could do that same thing with those LED lights. And they could make a picture if they wanted to. I guess I said I was gonna make a heart, so let me make a heart. I don't know how to make a heart. Sure, okay. Or another option is instead of creating it myself, I could do something like this show icon and that's actually gonna create a much better heart than what I created, okay? So it's got different things. Maybe they're doing a smiley face and a frowny face or something to that effect, okay? So they could do a show icon. When they press A, it is going to show that heart. Now, we said that we wanted to have a flashing heart. So again, right now, it's just there, showing me that when I press A, that it's just there. Because I have nothing else there, it's gonna just stay on my screen. So if I wanted a flashing heart, options that I could do, again, I could use that same pause feature, and now I could come in and I could um, show a different icon. I could come here and I could say that I want nothing. Okay, so now it's going to show this. It's going to pause for one second and then it's going to go to nothing. And now it's nothing. Okay, so it was on the screen for one second and then it's not. That doesn't really help though because it's not flashing, it just showed up and then went away. So things that I could do is I could actually create a loop and I could say that I want to repeat it for four times. So now when I press the A button, it's going to report or repeat four times. Notice that when I brought that in, okay, I was, it, it's going to put it wherever you want it. So when I brought it in, I wanted it to be here. So it's saying that it's um, repeating and anything that goes inside of that is what the action is going to be. So it's going to repeat this action four times. So instead of it being one second, let's make it fast. So I'm going to play it. I'm going to click on A and it should be flashing four times. But what happens if I want it to go forever? So instead of being it when I press A, it could be that is just flashing forever. All right, I just want to sh I want to show you one more thing, and this would be as if they want to roll a dice. All right, so when you roll a dice, you're kind of shaking those dice. So I could do something like bringing an input. So on shake this time. And notice that there are different options with that shake. It could be like a free fall. So if something falls, if it tilts left or right. So maybe they could make a video game with these. Um, for this one example, I'm just gonna do that shake. So on a shake, so notice here is a number. And I could say that I want it to be six, for example. Okay, so now, when I play here, you can't really shake on this because that doesn't work. So it puts this shake button up here. But now look, when I shake it, a six pops up. Okay, but that's not like shaking a dice because when you roll that dice, it's actually a random number, right? So while that's cool, it's not actually doing what we need it to. So instead of just showing that number, what it could do is you could use math down here and you're going, you could say that you would like them to pick a random number. So notice now um, it doesn't click onto a bottom of anything because it is rounded. 
So we actually would need to go in to our rounded area. So if you notice, I can actually click and attach it there. And now it is saying show a number. It's picking a random number with the dice. You may say that you're picking six is my highest, one is my lowest because it's one through six. And then they can on shake pick a random number one through six. So as I'm doing that, it is picking those random numbers. Now going back to some of the other things that I learned, if I um, want it to, I could have it pick a random number, and then I could say that I want it to pick it, and I can say that I want to repeat. If I can't remember where my repeat is in here, I'm like, I thought I knew where it was, but it's not showing up, and I'm struggling to find it, I could, search for it. So this is actually showing me that it's in the loops, which is great. So I'm going to repeat that. Remember, I need to put that inside so it's saying on the shake, it's repeating it and showing a number one through six. I can now say how many times I want to repeat it. So maybe I needed a six digit number for a class project or something. I could have it repeat that six times. So now on my shake, it is giving me a six digit number. And it will end with the last one. That was really fast. I didn't really have time to write that down or maybe I needed, didn't need to, but maybe I needed to slow it down. So I could, on the shake, repeat that number, or I mean, show a number picking randomly, one through six, and it's gonna do that six times. But maybe I need it to pause. Again, if I remember where that's at, that's awesome. Sometimes I can find it easy because I just remembered, but if I can't, I can always search for it right here and search for that pause. Now, if I do it up here on shake, it's going to pause and then it's going to repeat six times. Probably not gonna be exactly what I want. Okay, so I could come and I could um, repeat, show number, pause, okay? Let's try that. <clears throat> I'm gonna say that it's going to pause for one second in between each one. I'm going to shake it. Wait, what happened? It didn't seem to pause for that one second that I was asking for. That's called a bug. So we need to debug it. Well. Oh, I know what I did. I put it in the wrong spot. So instead, I can take that pause. I can put it in with the repeat. So it's going to pick a number at random, and then it's going to pause. And then there, it's going to do that six times. So let's try that now. Let's go ahead and shake it. Two, pause, five, pause, four. So it slowed down my number until I got it to repeat six times. All right, so those are some of the basics. Like I said, there's a lot of different features here. Inputs, there's more inputs basically. We could add music to it if we wanted to. The radio is, um, if it's, they're trying to send or receive from other things. Notice there's more of those as well, okay? There's the loops that we talked about Logic is usually like your if-then statements. So those are gonna be your conditionals that um, it talked about in your standards. There's always variables where you can actually make your own variable, which is pretty cool. And then I love the math because now you're starting to get into um, the math side of things where kids are starting to learn more about rounding or square roots and that you, they could do that as part of a pro math project. Okay. Um, there's also, let me go back this button called extensions. And that's going to be really good when you guys start working with things like the Climate Action Kit. Um, climate Action Kits is called um, Forward Education. So Forward Edu. And once you click on that, it would actually add it in to your project right here. So now notice that it added it in and there will be something that's called sensor. 
And they'll, um, so the different pieces here that are in your workspace, or not your workspace, but in your toolbox, um, will match what it needs for forward education. So sensors, motors, and there's some, a few other things that may be added. Um, and then there's also these advanced features that could be added and used as well. And then the last thing I wanted to show you is how to connect it in case you wanted to look at the actual micro bit. So here's your micro bit, it's really small. And then if you connect it, you connect it USB using the micro USB and you will connect it um, at the top. So you will connect it and it will make a noise. And then right here on those three dots, you'll be able to click on the connect device. Sounds like a video game. It will tell you step by step what you need to do. Hit that next button and then it's going to tell you that you need to pair. You can pair there and then you can click on the connect. Notice it's going to make noise again telling you that it's connecting and it will then it will be connected and you can click on done. So now that you've hit done, you can actually use that download button and it's actually going to um, download it onto your micro bit. You can see on the back that it's um, that light is bouncing. That means that it is doing the downloading that it needs to. And now when I shake it, notice the song is playing and it is doing my numbers just like it was on the screen. All right, I'm going to disconnect that for now and I'm actually going to unplug it and turn it off. One other thing I wanted to show you guys really quickly is uh, when we go to back to the main website, we did this all projects right here, but notice that there are these tutorials that you or students could do. I kind of took you through this flashing hearts one already and the name tag and the dice already, but notice that there are lots of other, um, so a couple other ones that they could pick from. Or there's also these down here that are for the newer micro bit, which is what we have, that they could go um, in further depth. So um, that's gonna be pretty much it for this PD. I'm going to come back and present on this screen just to make sure that we got through everything. So that's kind of the stuff that we worked on. We talked about the microseconds, the blinking heart. Um, we talked about uh, where we saw the output and that is on the actual micro bit. We saw that happen with either the sound or the LEDs. And now um, let's just wrap up. Remember that our learning intentions were that we are learning about the micro bit and makecode.com so you can get a basic understanding of it. And your success criteria is that you'll know you're successful when you can look at those basic functions and features and understand them. And then you can use that block code to input some programs. So go ahead and try out your um, micro bit. The more you use it, the more you get to know it and the easier it becomes. Don't be afraid to um, test it out and then debug when things aren't working for you. Um, let's go ahead and create an action plan for today. Um, think of one thing that you learned today that you can take back into your classroom and how can you commit to implementing it? Thanks. If you have any questions, let me know. My name again is Chandra Martz and have a great day.